Going through this example will help you understand theoretical, actual, and percent yield problems. First, we'll review some important definitions. Yield simply means the amount of a particular product formed in a chemical reaction. Theoretical yield, also called predicted yield, is the amount of a product predicted by a stoichiometric calculation. In other words, if we're given the amounts of reactants and asked to use stoichiometry to find the mass of a product, then we are finding the theoretical or predicted yield of that product. For various reasons, when a reaction is carried out in a real physical setting, like a lab or industrial site, we don't always get the amount of product that's predicted. The amount we do get is called the actual yield, which is defined as the amount of a product that is actually obtained in a chemical reaction. Now for percent yield. The formula we use to calculate percent yield is percent yield equals the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100%. So percent yield is a ratio of the amount we do get to the amount we expect to get, expressed as a percentage. The actual yield and theoretical yield must be in the same unit. Usually grams are used for these, but kilograms or even moles may also be used, as long as they're the same. Now if the actual yield of a particular product was equal to the theoretical or predicted yield, then you can see that the ratio of actual to theoretical yield would be 1 to 1, so the percent yield would be 100%. However, in many reactions that take place in labs and industrial sites, the actual yield is less than the theoretical or predicted yield. In these cases, the percent yield is less than 100%. This problem illustrates an example of such a situation. Given the equation N2 plus 3H2 gives 2 NH3, when 2.5 kilograms of hydrogen is added to an excess of nitrogen at 450 degrees Celsius, 4.92 kilograms of ammonia is produced. Just to note here that the actual and percent yields in this reaction do depend on temperature, so it is stated here. However, the temperature itself is not used anywhere in the calculations you're doing, so you can just ignore it from now on in the problem. Part A asks for the theoretical yield of NH3 in kilograms. Part B asks for the actual yield of NH3. And Part C asks for the percent yield of NH3. We'll start by calculating the theoretical yield of NH3. This is just the mass of NH3 we predict would be formed using the given amount of reactants and stoichiometry. We can start by creating a plan. We're given the kilograms of the reactant H2, so we'll start with that. Now it tells us that there's an excess of N2, therefore we don't need to concern ourselves with the amount of N2. We know there's more than enough to react with the H2 that's added. We are going from one substance, which is hydrogen, to another substance, which is ammonia, so we'll need to find the moles of hydrogen added. First we'll convert kilograms of hydrogen to grams then grams to moles of hydrogen. Next we'll find the moles of ammonia produced and change this to grams of ammonia. The question asks us for the theoretical yield in kilograms, so we must convert grams of ammonia into kilograms. So now our plan is complete. The question tells us we have 2.5 kilograms of H2, so we'll write that down here. We convert kilograms to grams by multiplying by 1000 grams to 1 kilogram. Next we convert grams of hydrogen to moles by multiplying by 1 mole over the molar mass of H2 2.02 grams. Next we convert moles of hydrogen to moles of ammonia by multiplying by the mole ratio 2 moles of ammonia to 3 moles of hydrogen, where the 2 is a coefficient on the ammonia in the balanced equation and the 3 is a coefficient on hydrogen. Next we convert moles of NH3 to grams by multiplying by the molar mass of NH3, 17.04 grams to one mole. And finally, to convert grams of ammonia to kilograms, we multiply by one kilogram to a thousand grams. We cancel out the kilograms of H2, the grams of H2, the moles of H2, the moles of NH3, and the grams of NH3 and we're left with kilograms of NH3, which is the unit we wanted. 
So we'll write that here as the unit for our answer. Then we go 2.5 times 1,000 divided by 2.02 .02 times 2 divided by 3 times 17.04 divided by 1,000, which gives us 14.06 kilograms. Now if this was rounded to three significant figures, it would be 14.1 kilograms. However, we're going to use this in a subsequent calculation, so we'll leave it expressed to one extra significant figure. We'll make a note of the theoretical yield down here. Part B asks us to find the actual yield of ammonia. The question tells us that 4.92 kilograms of ammonia is actually produced in this reaction. Therefore, we can state that the actual yield of ammonia is 4.92 kilograms. And we'll note that down here. Part C asks us to determine the percent yield of ammonia. The formula for percent yield is actual yield over theoretical yield times 100%. We substitute 4.92 kilograms in for the actual yield in the equation and 14.06 kilograms for the theoretical yield. Notice that both of these are in the same unit, which is kilograms. And we multiply this by 100%. We can cancel out the kilograms and go 4.92 divided by 14.06 times 100, which comes out to 35.0%, rounded to three significant figures. So we'll note the percent yield here. So we can now summarize the whole question by stating that when 2.5 kilograms of hydrogen is added to an excess of nitrogen and 4.92 kilograms of ammonia is produced, the theoretical yield of ammonia is 14.06 kilograms, but since this is our final answer, we'll express it to three significant figures to be consistent with the number of significant figures in the given data. So we'll state it here as 14.1 kilograms. The actual yield of ammonia is 4.92 kilograms, and the percent yield of ammonia is 35.0%.